All right, welcome to Microsoft Excel. This is a Microsoft Office program, and we're going to use this to uh, take a look at the results from dropping a meter stick through your fingers to find your reaction time. So, uh, as you can see here, I already have my data put into a kind of rudimentary table, and you can you can get fancier if you want, but we're going to stick to this basic setup. If I have all these different displacements from when I dropped the meter stick, I may want to find an average, which I can have Excel do instead of bothering to do it myself. I can highlight the cell where I'd like it to be and then type equals. That lets Excel know I want it to use a function. Now, there's other ways to let it know you want to use a function. You can go to the function bar. You can click on this thing, which is insert function. You can go to formulas up here. You can look at like math and trig or maybe recently used. There's average, or you can do auto sum stuff. There's there's a lot of tricks to get equations to work, but I like just typing it in. It's more basic for me. Anyways, uh, you can type in average, and it starts to guess at what you want it to do. But if you type in average here, it'll come up with the average function. Now, it's giving you a heads up for what it'll do. It says that the average function returns the average or arithmetic mean of its arguments which can be numbers, names, arrays, or references that contain numbers. That started off as useful and then kind of bled into uh, bizarre stuff over here, but whatever. Average is an average. So now you need a left parentheses, and between parentheses it will average whatever you want. So I've just left clicked and highlighted the displacements that I'm looking at. Now if I put a right parentheses, Excel will know that it wants me to have it do a calculation, that it wants an average of cells C5 to C24. So that's what I'm looking to have averaged. If I hit enter, it goes ahead and does it. And down here there's a number, 36.675. And that number is as a result of this equation. And it's kind of nice that it spits that out for me. And if I want to, I can come back up here. It highlights this blue section so I know that this is what it's averaging. And if I were to change any of the numbers in there, the average at the bottom would automatically change, which is a neat thing too. Now, uh, that's just taking an average. I've got a lot more calculations to do. This displacement here, I want to turn these centimeters into meters. So I need to divide by 100. So I want to say, I want to take this cell and divide by 100. And if I do that, it'll do this calculation for me but I have to do that uh, another 20 times. And there's a few ways to do that. If I come back up here, I look at the equation, it's tied to C5. And so it'll take C5 and divide by 100. If I want it to do that for more cells, I can click on this box right here, and then this little black box down here in the bottom right, if I put my cursor over until it turns black, I can click and drag all the way down, and it'll follow this calculation all the way down to the bottom. Now, each time that it moves a box, you'll notice that the equation changes a little bit. So here it's looking at C9, which is the appropriately shifted box for this cell. And that's really nice. It does that automatically as you move it down. And so it'll scroll down through here, and it'll even do it for this, uh, where it was a previously calculated value. So you can have one equation lead right into the next, which is neat. Uh, now. If I take these displacements and I want to calculate reaction time, I can do that as well. But I'm going to need a little bit more information. I can talk about gravity, because these all need gravity. And gravity is negative 9, whoops, 9.8 meters per second squared. I'm not going to bother with the unit, but it, you know it. So here, if I want the reaction time, that's calculated through kinematics. And I already know that the equation that I should be using is delta t is equal to the square root of 2 times the displacement divided by acceleration. And that all came from uh, a variety of things. I came from one equation, did some algebra, solved, and did stuff. But that you've done before you watch this video, so I'm not going to explain that. In any case, I need to figure out how to use this value and these values to come up with reaction times. So I can say calculate uh, and put in parentheses so that it knows to use proper order of operations 2 times the displacement 
and divide that by gravity. Now that's a really rudimentary thing. And if you look, it came out negative. That gives me a hint that I should remember that my displacement is negative, and so it should be negative d5. And let's put it in parentheses too, just, just to be safe. So two times negative displacement equal divided by, sorry, gravity. And that works, except I did say I needed it square rooted. So let's take this whole thing and we want to square root it all. That's another equation. SQRT is the square root function and I can have Excel square root that for me, which is great. Now this is the reaction time uh, for that specific trial, trial one. And that's how long it would take me to respond. And so this equation right up here gave me that value. If I want to carry this on, I would normally just click on that black box and drag down, but there's one trick. If I try and do that, it's going to freak out. And that's because here, it's taking a look at H3. I don't want it to look at H3, I want it to always look at H2. And so I can come back to this equation and put in a dollar sign. The dollar sign locks it in place so that it always looks at that one spot. And if I have a dollar sign in front of the H, it always looks in the H column. Dollar sign in front of the 2, it always looks in the 2 row. And really, I only need the dollar sign 2, but I'm going to do them both. And so now, if I drag this down, it will always look at H2 for gravity. And it will appropriately shift the displacement on all the way down, which is pretty nice. I mean, that way you can do lots of calculations without having to enter a, a whole column of gravity. And so you find this way that really makes it quick. You can even have calculation after calculation after calculation if you want. So it's useful. Now, if you look down here, well, first off, all these numbers are a bit too long for me to make sense of it. So I'm going to make them a little shorter just so that it makes more sense. Eh, maybe one longer. And now, what if I did this by finding another alternative? So here in the bottom is the average drop distances reaction time. But what if I wanted to average these reaction times just for comparison? So average reaction time. I can do the same sort of thing where I'd say equals average, just like I did before. Select all of these and enter that out. Now, this average reaction time is slightly different than that reaction time average. And there's good reason for that. But it's a valuable discussion to see what makes them different. This one and that one are fundamentally different in how they're calculated and also a little bit different in how they came out. So something interesting to talk about and with that, Good luck coming up with your own reaction times, and uh, good luck with the lab. And that's it.